Good morning, everybody. Is my co-host Rico? My co-host Rico, Milo, Pocahontas behind us, the porcupine in for training. Let's see. Hey, Eva. Hey, everybody. See, there's Pocahontas. Here we're live stream training in our level two. And she just went to her station. So maybe I'll show a little work uh, with Pocahontas, uh, maybe after, towards the end of the episode. There's Rico. Good morning, Lori. Good morning, Julie, Mary, Jennifer, Carrie, Ray. Yeah, coffee with the critters has started. Good morning, Brenda, Lydia, Cambry. Are you done? Get do some more. Show us some more. He's like, why are you sitting way over there? Hey, Tim. So I'm on my laptop ah! today. Yeah. Do it again. Do it again. Ready? One, two, three, somersault. It'd be great if you did it on cue. Ready? Do it. One, two, three. Not happening. <laughs> hey, Anne, good morning. What? So uh, welcome to another episode of Coffee with the Critters, where we go live. Yeah! Every Sunday morning. Hey, Puffy. Hey, Beth. Hey, Monica. I bet you guys wouldn't believe me if I told you it is silent here until I go live with Coffee with Critters. <laughs> Got some sunshine trying to peek in the corner there. Um, so yeah, here we go live every morning, every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern for Coffee with the Critters. Hi! Wow! Yeah! Um, so for those that are new, <laughs> good morning, Sandy. For those that are new, my name is Laura Joseph, owner of the Animal Behavior Center. We are an international educational center where we teach people. Yeah! Um, we teach people about understanding animal behavior using applied behavior analysis and positive reinforcement. Um, and we do that through our live streams. Good morning, Shelly. Um, trying to eliminate that ray of sunshine. I can't believe I just said that. It's slowly creeping in the side window. Um, where we have very little of that at this time of year in Northwest Ohio. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, so um, we've got a hot topic this morning. Um, Patricia, I am so glad you're on here um, because every morning before, or every Sunday morning before I go live in Coffee with the Critters, um, I give a lot of thought to my topic and rock and roll. And I have it all right here, what I want to talk about. And um, the topic of do animals have emotions? Um, <laughs> Thanks, Eva. Do animals have emotions? Um, in this topic, let's pull it up. This is what we're going to talk about today. And in reading and listening to different um, items, ah, item uh, on this topic, something I keep thinking of is anthropomorphism, putting uh, human emotions on animals. Um, that's right, Rock. So I have a feeling anthropomorphism is going to tie into this topic pretty heavily. And as many of us know, including Pat and I, um, anthropomorphism is a hot topic as well. Um, yeah, so I keep thinking about that this morning as I'm thinking about this morning's topic of do animals have emotions? Um, and they kind of are tying in together. And for everybody who um, has, I have asked who you want to see on interviews, one of your favorite topics, anthropomorphism. Yeah. Uh, I've been asking people, who do you want to see me interview? Uh, and Dr. Pat, your name is coming up frequently. So maybe in one of our future discussions. I know we've had a discussion on anthropomorphism in the past. Maybe we do that again. 
Um, so does that make sense is why I keep thinking about this topic. Anthropomorphism keeps kind of tying, well, not kind of tying in. Um, yeah, so um, as we get started, I, before I get started on the topic, I want to, okay, Pat, I will get in touch with you after this live stream and let's get something scheduled, okay? Um, Pat and I have talked about, with a panel of three other people in addition to us, have talked about um, anthropomorphism in the past. And it's not always well received, but we don't have to agree with everything. When we don't agree, that's when we learn. That's when our minds open up. Um, so all of us have um, different backgrounds and thoughts on that. Um, but before we get started, uh, I just want to make a couple announcements or a couple of um, comments that Facebook has changed their algorithms, uh, meaning some topics and posts aren't going to show up as regularly as they used to. And with that said, they want it more conversation based and engaging things like this. That's right, Rock. Um, so. In order to make sure you do not miss an episode of Coffee with the Critters, go up to the right hand, good morning, Nancy from Key West. Go up to the right hand corner of your screen, click on the three dots. What, Rock? Click on the three dots and hit um, turn on notifications. The other thing you can do is um, if you're following us, go on there and select see first. So, yeah, that just makes sure that um, you don't miss an episode of Coffee with Critters. I put a, pour a lot of my heart and soul into this every morning, and we're getting great reviews. So thank you, guys. Um, we have followers from all over the world, so please feel free to post where you are viewing this from. Um, we are located in Northwest Ohio, but all of our services are online via our live streaming services. Um, right here on Facebook, and I have a pig right at my feet. So, one of the things I want to talk about today, you have a calendar reminder? <laughs> That's cool, Lori. One of the things I want to talk about today in discussing do animals have emotions, uh, me, I believe they do um, but yep okay everybody's saying from Texas uh, New York would love to see if there's any post where you're viewing this from I do go through afterwards and take a look at this but um, one of the great researchers who was right here in Bowling Green Ohio and he just recently passed away which is so unfortunate and so sad is I hope I'm not destroying his name, um, Jacques Pansep. Um, he's somebody I've been following for a couple of years. What was that? Yeah! Nice job! Everybody's flapping their wings this morning. Yes! Milo, we're going to have to get you a pair of wings. Pocahontas, get you a pair of wings. <laughs> so, Gretchen, you're right here in Sylvania. Hey! Um, <laughs> A lot of people in Ohio. So if you have never heard of him, I highly suggest you Google him. What? Yeah. Um, he's an amazing man, a neuroscientist and psychobiologist. Rocky. And once this live stream is over, I'm going to post the link to the YouTube video of him, his TED Talk on Do Animals Have Emotions. Um, Oh, Glorian's on here. So Glorian's the one that um, shared coffee with the critters the other day in a different language. Yay! Thank you. And thanks for being such an avid follower to everybody. And that's right! That's, yeah! Um, <laughs> I am going to reinforce that. Nice job, Rock. Let's see those wings. Yeah, Rocky! Come on, Rico. Let me see your wings. Let me see your wings. So now I'm going to ask him to put his wings on and he's going to do it himself. 
You gonna do a somersault? I don't know. Hi, Rocky. Rico's like, why are you so far away? Um, but if you Google the TED Talk on do animals have an emo emotions, you will see a 17 and a half minute talk of his, which is absolutely fascinating. Um, I've watched it several times. I read his book. Um, another one of his books that I have that I will read over and over again is Are We Intelligent Enough to Know How Intelligent Our Animals Are? It's a fascinating book. Um, if you do not have that in your animal library, I highly recommend it. Rocky! So, um, Jacques, and I may be pronouncing it wrong, maybe it's Jacques, I don't know, um, has done extensive research in, um, yes, he's known as the rat tickler. Um, if somebody's in here, that if they can post the link, I should have posted it for you, but if not, after this um, live stream is over, I will definitely post it at the top. Um, that's right, Rocky. Very good. Um, pronounced yak. Okay. Um, he has a. He's known as the rat tickler, and um, he did a lot of research. He just passed away, unfortunately, April of 2017. Um, he. Oh, thanks, Tim. And. He did a lot of research on do animals have emotions, and he did several years of research on um, play behavior in rats. And um, you can see videos of him tickling rats and um, listening to the sound of laughing rats and rats playing. And he says, do animals have emotions? Absolutely. And he also says, the more we know about animals, the better we understand animals, the better we'll understand ourselves. So he was involved in a lot of research <clears throat> in um, coming up with um, antidepressant medication for people based on his um, neuroscience research in animals. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is part of a a gym that we have hanging from the ceiling. I just have to remember during my live stream not to turn around and whack my head on it, which will happen. What do you think, Rock? Um, so, and he starts off his talk with, what would be life be like with, without emotions? Um, it would be very empty and very lonely. And Think about some of the emotions that we have in our daily lives. Um, a lot of research starts by a lot of research will start off by being inquisitive and trying to that is a scream that's very hard for me to listen to. A lot of research will start by um, being inquisitive, wanting to understand more. Uh, do animals have emotions? Absolutely. I think so, 100%. Um, yeah, very loud today. Hopefully that calms down here, especially in the background. Um, as you guys know, Rico, um, he will be 14 in <clears throat> May. He had an accident before years ago this August um, that um, almost took his life. And I believe that there was a lot of emotions um, from me and from him throughout that accident. Um, and I honestly believe it was a lot of his recovery was based on our relationship with each other. And 
being next to him. I was by his side um, almost 100% of the time. What do you think? And our veterinarian here, the awesome Dr. Tim Riker, um, former Toledo Zoo vet, former San Diego Zoo vet, um, he is one that gave me one of the most important pieces of advice. He's when Rico was in the vet, he was at the emergency vet, and then he was uh, in Dr. Tim's care. He said, the best thing you can do for this animal is take him home right now. And he told me, he's like, he is going to live. Uh, but I brought Rico home, didn't I? And took him into a spare bedroom where it was nice and quiet and warm. And I sat with him. Um, <clears throat> tell you about the accident. Maybe we do another one on the accident because it's been almost four years and I can finally talk about it because there's guilt involved. And it was me. I could have prevented the situation. Um, I made a very stupid move trying to save time. And in return, it almost cost something their life. Um, so let me just jot that down. But back to do animals have emotions? Um, Like during Rico's accident, I mean, Rico's going to be 14 years old in May. I expect him to live 30 years and beyond. Right, Pipsqueak? Say, that is right. <laughs> um, that relationship, I remember telling him, you were supposed to be with me for the rest of life. Uh, Please, let's make sure that happens. Um, yes! That is right! That is right! So I think those emotions and that relationship built with Rico through training and interaction is what got him through that accident. I think it was a lot of it. Um, but what would life be like without emotions? Yak says... Um, it would be devoid of value. Think about that. Think of some of the emotions um, <laughs> that we have. Um, happiness. Um, what brings happiness? Fear. Um, rage. Um, searching for comfort. And Yak goes into uh, detail about um, <clears throat> goes into detail about mothering, um, the mothering of humans, um, and the mothering different relationships and um, peace and comfort that mothers of different animals provide to their offspring. Um, so, a lot of our emotions we can read through body language um, a lot of it we can't and I'm here to say and I'm sure you guys do in, in me dealing and working with animals pretty much 12 hours a day seven days a week numerous species we're joined in this room right now with pigs porcupines and parrots all happen to be three three peas um, I am here to tell you there is so much we do not know and do not understand about animals. And our assumptions do us no justice. Um, there was once a time, um, I know a lot of times the best we can read animals is through their body language. So how do we, under how do we get to understand their emotions if they can't verbally tell us? We can read that. Um, and in Yak's research, he does a lot of um, measuring of release of certain chemicals. And in, in applied behavior analysis, understanding behavior you, through observing and measuring data, um, you can measure... 
you can absolutely measure um, chemicals released in the body. And, and what is that in relationship to? And that was a lot of his research as the rat tickler um, because he could measure those brain waves and those chemicals released. Um, and when we as animal caretakers, Lindsay, hey Lindsay, our assumptions do us no justice. Um, they don't. And that's where um, anthropomorphism can come in and really do a lot of danger. Um, do I anthropomorphize, meaning putting human relations, human emotions, um, hang on, I'm trying to do too many things here because I want to show anthropomorphism, um, putting human labels on animal behaviors. Um, anthropomorphism, do I do it? Yeah, I do it to quickly get a message across to a person because I can have a conversation with you and tell you, um, and tell you something to get you to relate to the animal really quick and get a better understanding of the behavior you may be seeing. But anthropomorphism can also do a lot of uh, injustice and anthropomorphism can kill. Um, when we put human labels on animal behavior, um, and by that meaning we can, we can kill our animals, and many people do, through using food as comfort, using human food as comfort. Um, so, and if you're interacting with an animal and assuming that it is feeling a certain way because humans feel that certain way, depending on the type of animal you're interacting with, like a giraffe who has the the head the size of my upper torso. Um, if my assumptions are wrong and I am not reading them correctly, um, I can put myself in a very dangerous situation. We were just doing this in a live stream yesterday um, in the Parrot Project where um, a certain animal looks a certain way. It looks cute, cuddly, or it looks sad, so you want to comfort it. If you do not understand that animal behavior, um, you can quickly get and easily get bit if you are misreading it. Um, animals are so similar to us, but so different than us. Um, let me take a look at some of what you guys are seeing. Um, I'm going to put what Joanne says up here. I see depression, grief, joy, and many cases of loss of a caretaker. Um, the reason I wanted to pull up Joanne's comment is because Yak talks about um, animal emotions. Um, one that he dives deep into is depression. Depression, um, anxiety, we see these, these are so common in human behavior. Why would we not think they exist in animal behavior? Um, look at how many, look at how many diseases and abnormalities we have in human beings. Why would we not think they exist with animals? And that's when Yak says, when we better understand our animals, will better understand ourselves. He did a lot of research um, in measuring these opioids um, and coming up with um, antidepressants for people. We see depression in people is very, in humans is very common. Why would it not, why would it be any different for our animals? In several ways in which we can help that depression is through um, medical advice, training, behavior modification plans, enrichment. We do all that here, minus the medical. Um, that is why I am so huge on um, enrichment. 
we have a very large enrichment team here, which is getting ready to grow by four. Um, we have a new volunteer starting today, and I think I see uh, a couple different volunteers on here as well. <clears throat> um, if you look at all of our enclosures, they are they are heavily provided with enrichment, including the porcupines over here, um, because something else I want to talk about is um, social enrichment, which is one of the most complex forms of enrichment. So many animals are social, social creatures. There are several that are not. Um, so providing human interaction can be a, a major stressor to some of your um, animals that are not social, but this room is full of animals that are social creatures. Um, parrots are very social. Pigs can be very social. Porcupines, uh, I don't know a lot about porcupines. That's why Pocahontas is here, and I'm learning about por por uh, por porcupines through Pocahontas. That is not so easy to say. Um, one thing I'm noticing, if I have a social animal, I want to keep that social interaction with it, where if it's with myself or somebody else, um, as high as possible. Right here, I have a pig sitting at my feet. Um, so I'm paying attention to those behaviors. Right, Rico? And when I'm training the porcupine, she is teaching me so much. When I walk into the room, she runs to the front of her enclosure. Why is she running to the front of that enclosure? Is it for, it's because I'm delivering, I'm always pairing myself with the deliverer of something good. Um, <clears throat> or is she running for interaction? Interaction with me. And I'm here to tell you, she does both. She does both. How do I tell? Uh, we have started letting her out of her enclosure and she will choose to follow us. And um, she likes to stand right between our feet. That's fine, don't back up. Um, but some of the other emotions that Yash talks about is enthusiasm. When you lack enthusiasm, um, Would you like to take over? When you lack enthusiasm, often depression sets in. Um, and think about that. We all have our individual personalities. I am a very enthusiastic. We gotta work on that scream. Um, that scream is a sign of anxiety. That scream is the sound Rocky came to us <clears throat> with 10 years ago. It happened once every three seconds for hours on end, and it was also accompanied by an abnormal repetitive behavior, um, circling in the cage. And a lot of that anxiety... is based out of seeing things that they cannot get to. Um, so, and a topic we're gonna talk about in the future is separation anxiety. Um, separation anxiety is very high within the companion animal community with animals that are very social. That is the parrot. And I always tell people, you, animals are intelligent as they need to be to survive. Um, the more intelligent the animal, the harder it is to keep. I should have got into botany. 
<laughs> I have not seen separation anxiety in any of my house plants. <laughs> um, so yeah, what you're what you're hearing back there is uh, anxiety. I know from years of living with it and modifying that behavior. Um, separation anxiety is one of the toughest behaviors. In my experience to change um, separation anxiety and abnormal repetitive behaviors both are areas I love working with abnormal repetitive behaviors because abnormal repetitive behaviors are ones that you would not very nice rock you would not see in the animal in the wild it's usually due to um, but not definitely limited to um, lack of enrichment lack of social complexity, um, lack of choice, lack of control, um, being constrained from being able to get to what you want to get to. Um, I see that is very heavy in the companion parrot world because one of the things I'm going to talk about, I am trying to stay on track here. Um, we're going to start talking about social, I'm going to touch on social social complexities and research and social complexity and how it has an effect or lack of social complexity, how it has an effect on emotions. Hmm? I imply that research into my presentations. Um, and that is why I do exactly what I do. I like to empower animals, giving them choice, control, complexities, uh, through enrichment, behavior modification plans, and training. As you've heard me say, studies show if we're actually using positive reinforcement training, it is the animal's preferred form of enrichment. And speaking about emotion, this is why I never give an end of training signal. That is why I don't give an intentional end of training signal. It's because if you're working with a social animal and they have limited socialization due to these things called enclosures, um, if that training is their preferred form of enrichment, why do they want to be told that it's over? You've heard me say this before in the past. That can lead to some pretty dangerous situations. So instead, I redirect the end of training session. Um, and I often do that through enrichment because you can definitely increase anxiety by giving an end of training signal. Um, that, that, that noise. If I could measure my stress hormones right now, they're probably pretty high. Why? Because his are high. And when I see an anxious animal, anxious in not a good way for its own well-being, I start getting very stressed. When I start getting very stressed, I start moving my body, things like this. You'll see a side effect from him. Yeah. Um, you'll see when Rico's, when Rocky's stressed, I get stressed. When I get stressed, Rico gets stressed. How is that for social complexity? Mm -hmm. um, so this is negative reinforcement. <laughs> I'm trying to escape, avoid a consequence. I don't need Rico getting stressed because then when Rico gets stressed, then all everything goes to hell in the handbasket really fast. <laughs> um, what do you think he's anxious about right now, Susie? He's probably picking up on my tone of voice because when I, and have you noticed that I've modified my tone of voice since the beginning of Coffee with the British this morning? I get very excited um, and it shows, I think, and they can hear it. What? Sorry, I've got to pet my pig. Um, so they can hear that excitement in my voice and they react to it. And I've started to lower my tone. And he is calmly interacting, playing with a toy. Um, can you guys still hear me okay? <laughs> um, yeah, so 
a lot of times um, when people are in bad moods here, oh, the animals pick on upon it so fast. We give so many cues through our body language. And I believe that our animals are 10 times better at reading our body language than we are at reading theirs. Um, I do want to tell you about observing body language and understanding the body language better of an animal through reading their body language when interacting with each other. So I'm going to make a little note here, R and R. Um, but some of the other um, emotions that Yak talks about is um, we have enthusiasm, lack of it, leads to depression, anxiety, and fear. I just got done talking about one of the animals I was working with yesterday has uh, a lot of his behavior concerns I see are a result of fear, fear-based behavior. That makes me very sad for that animal to, sad, there's emotion, that makes me very sad and when I get sad, I pour my, my time and my effort back into more research. Um, to know after a year of living with this animal, so much of the consequences of behavior that I've been able to observe and document through the past year are fear-based. Um, this animal is at least 27 years old. Um, hopefully all 27 of those years didn't have to be lived like that. Um, I am not dwelling on the past, but I do have to take the past into consideration on how to change the future um, through my behavior modification plans with that animal, with all animals. That's called a history of reinforcement. Um, so some of the other ones, anxiety, fear, panic, sadness, and I have written down here vocalizations. I have no idea what I was thinking. Um, oh, where were we just talking about this the other day? Um, I think the social media director and I were talking about vocalizations of fear and panic. Um, vocalizations, noises that your animal makes, it is so key to best understand them. If you do not understand them, you can better understand them by this is what I do. Whenever I hear a certain vocalization from a different animal, um, my ears are always on. I'm always listening. Sitting here typing on the computer, I'll hear a vocalization. I will turn to see what is in the environment, the immediate environment that's causing that vocalization to happen. That's uh, because that can reinforce that vocalization. I want to understand what emotion that is to the best of my ability to see if there's something in the environment that we need to keep reinforcing or get it out of here. Um, so we were talking yesterday about understanding those different vocalizations, um, understanding what they mean. Um, when you understand what they mean, you will better understand your animal and how to provide a better life um, or relationship with that animal. So when Milo gives a lot of different sounds, and those are sounds that he just doesn't do them just because, hey Deb, I didn't see on you. Um, he doesn't, uh, who am I referencing to about emotions? Yuck. Um, I know you know about him as well. You and I have talked about him before. Um, understanding those vocalizations, the animal isn't giving them for no reason. Those vocalizations mean something to that animal. When we can better understand, and this is what I do, when I hear a certain vocalization, um, no matter what it's coming from, Rico gives one. I have a desk that's right back here. And it sits next to those row of windows. Um, he does a little vocalization, and I can't 
I can't uh, repeat it because he does it so well. It's a really soft sound and it's too like squeak squeak or really soft. And you could easily pass that off as just not paying attention to it. But I've started paying attention to it. I've paid attention to it for years. Um, but when I look at him, I turn and look at him, I look and see what he's looking at. And his head is tilted, so I turn to look and see what he's looking at. And I guarantee you there is either a, a jet flying by, a balloon flying by, a hawk flying by. Um, but be specific, Bob, right, Eva? Um, he only does, so you could say he does that out of a feared object. Nope, tell me more. Give me more. So I look for more uh, things being more specific. What he does is he does that if there's something in the sky. Because he doesn't make that same sound when there's a feared object on the ground. It's only in the sky. And it's not when something perches on the house, it's something flying by. Um, so what I do to connect better with him is let him know, hey, I think I've got it. I think I understand what you're communicating to me. And when I interact with him, and there's certain things I do with him, like I'll stick my finger in the cage and he usually comes over and holds it. Um, he'll hold my finger and we both watch the airplane fly by and then when I'm done I usually tell him I gotcha I understood what you were saying and that communication makes this bond I'm watching it this week beyond words I can even describe and things like that is what I believe provides a healthier lifestyle for the animals in our care um, so that's the key in understanding um, what does pain look like in your animal um, <clears throat> Michael uh, this is getting a little off topic here but uh, your umbrella has been in a panting mood lately what is your take on that behavior my take on that behavior is um, without knowing more, just off the top of my head, but my first suspicion would be um, it's sexual in nature. So be careful with that one. Um, so then Yacht goes into um, great detail of the problems or the concerns when an animal is removed from its mother at, at a very young age. Um, us in the animal community, we know what implications that can have. You can have behavior issues skyrocket. Um, and he was talking about um, the release of opioids. Um, and that brought me to when the animals, including people, um, there's a series of studies out there, and I have research papers pretty thick um, on the side effects of primates being removed from their parents too early. And ongoing research, it is tough to read. It is tough to read. Um, it's hard to believe that I intentionally do this to myself every morning starting my day off with a huge pit in my stomach due to some of the research I'm reading. But the key in that is don't let that research go wasted. It happened. Let's learn from it. What can we take from this? But the side effects of primates psychologically being removed from their mother too young, being motherless, never seeing their mother ever, And the side effects of taking motherless primates 
and having them give birth. Wow, what it, it's 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 deep, and um, hopefully, what we have learned from that is don't do that again. Um, but the side effects of we know from several. I know Deb's on here. Yeah, that's exactly who I'm talking about, Deb. Harlow's, Harlow's primates. Um, yep, the Harlow experiments. Yes, that is exactly what I'm talking about. Those are deep and ooh, they just make me want to vomit. Um, but the side effects of taking uh, dogs from their parents too early. Um, we see this in the parrots as well. Um, yeah, that study is heartbreaking. And I have a book on it as well. Um, yeah, I've seen the visuals. It's hard to watch. Um, we know the side effects of imprinted parrots. Um, no. Please leave those parrots with their with their parents. Those parents are teaching those parrots some very um, key information that is impossible for us to teach it. Um, I, if I'm going to have an animal in my care, I want it well balanced between humans and animals. I need that animal to teach that pig. I need that pig's mother to teach that pig things it needs to know to be a very healthy pig in the future. Because if not, that animal, that pig is looking to me for information that I may not be able to give it and I do not understand. Um, we have an upcoming interview um, in the pig project on the importance of leaving piglets with their mothers for their future well-being. Um, so that also goes into detail on, um, how depression and suicide is so high with, among humans. Why would we not think it's there with our animals? I, I may be able to see it. I may be able to understand it. I, maybe I don't understand it. And when I see a behavior I do not understand, this happened in a live stream a couple of days ago, I'm like, I do not know what this behavior is. I, what do you think? Yeah. He's like, just keep petting me. I'm like, I do not understand what this behavior means. So what do I do in a situation where I don't understand a behavior? I back off. I back off because I don't want it paired with me. Um, I back off because I'm not sure if I'm the one causing this. Is this an undesired behavior? Meaning a lot of times undesired behavior, when I talk about it, it's not in the well best interest of the animal. And it's not in the right Rico. It's not in the best interest. If it's not in. <laughs> yeah, I'm picking up on what you're putting down. He's like, how do you have eyes in the back of your head? <laughs> oh, I will never tell you. Are you serious? So just that mimicking of behavior back and forth here, that's communication. And by me doing it back, I believe is what's reinforcing him to do it back to me. We do that. He resides out here. I'm in the house in there. I have my desk set up so I can watch out into this room and see my animals. Um, and that's communication happening through a couple barriers of walls, but it's visual communication. Um, <laughs> so he also goes in and talks. Once this live stream's over, go take a look at that YouTube video. Um, because he also talks about in in the rearing of young mammals, um, there's a chemical in the breast milk that reduces stress. Oh no! Oh god! Yeah! We've been trying to get Coco. Can you see him right there? Right, hey, right there. That white. Okay, right there. There you go. 
Um, we've been trying to get him off the ground because his nesting behaviors are being reinforced on the ground. So he is on an intermittent schedule reinforcement. When he's on that perch, I stand up and I go in and train him. Um, he's enjoying the, the training that much. Yeah. So he's requesting it. But back to, uh, there's a chemical in breast milk that reduces the stress in the infants. Um, he was talking about different studies with guinea, guinea pigs and with primates. And here I did want to talk about, we've got a couple minutes left, I want to talk about um, that body language between Rico and Rocky. Um, I don't care what the animal. All I'm doing is I'm reading body language. When I brought Rocky in 10 years ago, probably more than that now, I did not understand a lot of his body language. What I did understand very well was Rico's. So it was me, Rico, and Rocky sitting in a back room. Rocky was doing a behavior that I could describe as... And I use this carefully. The behavior of doing nothing. Okay, that is behavior. If the animal is sitting there doing nothing, it's doing something. It's sitting there, it's perching, it's, it's not moving. What's the behavior? What's moving? Nothing. Um, that's communication. And depending on the animal, that's big communication. Are you picking up what they're putting down? What I did not understand was Rocky's body language. What I did understand was Rico. And Rico's expression and body language Let me know to be very cautious of that behavior of Rocky doing nothing. Uh, <clears throat> so I learned about Rocky through Rico. So what I started doing was getting Rico and Rocky to start interacting via off contact, protective contact, um, so I could better understand Rocky. That brings me to the point of socialization. Uh, there's different, I've got a stack of research papers in there. There's different studies that show that one of the most complex forms of enrichment is social interaction. Coco! We provide that through our training. We provide that through our public. We provide that through our playing. Um, do we understand it? And there's one reason why I don't like to call myself a trainer is because some people think, oh, she just trains tricks. Training is teaching. Teaching is learning. Learning is communication. Communication is relationship building. That's a powerful statement I just said. Um, so one of the studies that I have in my office shows that communication is one of the most complex, complex form of enrichment. And take a look at the complexity of the social interaction with the animals in your care. Does it need improvement? Ours always can use improvement. Mm -hmm. So that's why I don't give an end of training signal. That is why I don't, that is why enrichment is so important. Because I can sit here and pet my pig that's sitting at my foot, that's been stationing at my feet for pretty much the past hour. I can't be here for this pig. This parrot, that porcupine, 24-7. Um, and if I am sitting here reinforcing social interaction the majority of the time. Rocky, what was that? I guarantee you, with a social animal, I am going to start reinforcing separation anxiety, which is one, which is, it's a tougher behavior to change. Most separation anxiety issues I've dealt with, that longer the history of reinforcement, meaning the longer uh, two of my biggest behavior cases here, Rocky and Coco, okay? 
Um, those are two of my biggest behavior issues here and concerns. And in both of those animals, you know what I see? Oh, I see. Behavior Hi. doesn't lie. Hi. What I see is a history based on their body language, how they're moving, how they're interacting with me. There, I really believe in both cases, there was a history of <laughs> continuous reinforcement of social interaction over bonding to one person. I see that those behaviors in both of those animals and those two animals are probably the biggest behavior issues I have here. And when you're dealing with separation anxiety, most of the time, the longer the history of reinforcement, the longer that separation anxiety has been reinforced, uh, the more likely it will never go away. It's going to have to be on a maintenance program. Yeah. So that's why I always say, be careful what you're reinforcing. B.F. Skinner said, you must never reinforce a behavior you do not want to see happen again. Good luck with that. All right. Um, so uh, that is a very moving presentation by Yak, And he said, he ends it with saying, when we start taking animal emotions seriously, and we should, we will better be able to care for them, which is what they deserve. And we will, we will better be able to understand ourselves. Um, and like I said, he recently passed away in April of 2017. What a loss to <clears throat> the human and animal community. So there you have it. <clears throat> Another episode of Coffee with the Critters, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I am going to post the link. I know some people already have. I'm going to post the link at the top of this page as soon as we're done. We have some new volunteers getting ready to walk in the door. Um, I have made a note to contact Dr. Patricia Anderson for an upcoming talk on anthropomorphism. Uh, maybe some other, maybe some other topics. I also made a note to do a coffee with the critters on Rico's accident so we can talk about that because I want to share with you um, hey Joe <laughs> love the hairdo yeah kind of kind of fits um, kind of fits my career um, <clears throat> because those steps in those accident in that accident can help us uh, I want to share with you what may be able to better prevent an accident in your future. But another thing, um, yeah, so join us every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern. Uh, we just had a level two member tell us the other day that um, in level two, it's nice they get coffee with the critters every single day. Um, we do live streams. We do this weekly, sometimes daily, monthly Q&As. We have them on, you are very welcome, species-specific information. We have, those are in our projects, um, our level one and level two memberships. Those are about understanding behavior um, and applied behavior analysis and using it with our animals. Okay, so for, if you guys want more information, please feel free to contact me. Um, you can reach us at theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. Um, that is our website. Make sure you type in the word the, and you can also reach me um, at my personal email address, um, Laura at the animal behavior center.com. So Tamar says I could listen to this all day. Thank you. That is what I pretty much do all day is this. Um, so, all right, guys, I'm going to end this episode. I will see you next Sunday. Pay attention to our website, the animal behavior center.com under events. You will see listed a coffee with the critters. Keep an eye out for um, future events we have coming up here. We are planning them for 2018, and some of them have never been done before. All right. See you guys next week. All right. Take care.